Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. My name is Terry Lynch. I'm with Oregon Ecology. Um, I found myself searching for a passageway one day. And that passageway leads right across the complete section of the Cascades, which I'm sitting in front of at the moment. On top of one peak. I want to make sure that everybody sees the type of things that we find in the process of research is involved. I have located a couple that's sitting here on top of the line of peak. She's facing south. Hmm, she's facing north. The middle, Cascadia Guides, alleged production in conjunction with Alien Strand Films. Everybody. Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast and ASDP. Uh, I'm sure you're catching us right now live on Alien Strand uh, there on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, welcome. Uh, thank you for following us on Twitter. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the uh, Nevada incident that just happened a few days ago. And we're going to have two other guests on with me as well. going to have Terry Lynch and Mr. David Aliff. So, uh, and we're going to get into it a little bit and, and just talk about everything that happened that night and that evening. Um, so, we're just... We're, we're very intrigued about everything that's happening uh, with with that story. Uh, it seems to change a little bit, but it's pretty much been stuck on point as we've been going with it. Uh, as you guys know, of course, I'm going to talk about this real quick. Uh, go to Watch the Middle. Please go watch it there on uh, Amazon Prime and LedsFilms.com, free on Tubi TV, uh, 13 other platforms, Hoopla. We're all over the place. So go check that out. We just hooked up our 16th platform all right so these are the channels you can catch it on uh give us a thumbs up man share it with your friends uh hope hope you guys enjoy it now speaking of the middle uh that filmed last year and we released it this year so now guess what we have the middle two c3 we're gonna start filming next week already so uh we're gonna have people you know just uh interview a lot of folks that have been uh affected by extraterrestrials and extraterrestrial craft and things that happens to them in their lives in their daily lives right so and this is what this film is going to be about you know we want to uh, spread the awareness and the disclosure you know uh, on everything that's happening if you guys want to comment i can see your comments come through and i'll put them on the screen uh you know and you know just you know chime in with us as we talk about this uh this nevada thing that just happened a few days ago all right so um if you missed our last podcast, uh, esoteric 
podcast. Man, I have a hard time saying that. I don't know why. Uh, with uh, Mr. Bradley Powers and uh, Jim Andre. If you have a chance, go back, check that out. We spoke about two hours, but you know what? It was a great, great show. We got a lot of information out there uh, to a lot of folks. You know, um, you know, because we have to, we have to spread disclosure, and that's what it's about. It's coming out more and more every day. Uh, that's what the disclosure is about. You know, we, we, um, as a team, you know, we have put together Alien Strand Disclosure Project, and I hope you guys have gone and checked out our website at asdp-ufo.com. You can actually report a UFO, talk to any of our representatives. I think we have like, whew, maybe ten representatives already from all over the country, and and to other countries as well. So uh, go visit our site, and you can download a lot of freebie stuff there too. If you're interested in disclosure, uh, there's a lot of stuff that has been dis- declassified, and then we have a case on there already. So. Uh, we also do supernatural. Now, speaking of uh, Alien Strand Disclosure Project, I'm going to go ahead and bring in uh, some people you might know and you might not know, but we're going to get to know them. So right now we're going to bring in uh, Mr. Terry Lynch. And then we're going to bring in Mr. David Aliff. Welcome, guys. How are you tonight? How y'all doing? I- I am doing very well. I'm tired as heck, though. <laughs> I was painting. I was I was doing some painting today, man. And let me tell you, it's just when you haven't done it in a while, it it it, uh, it really kicks your butt, man. I'm telling you, it just it, it gets you going, climbing up and down the stairs, a ladder, and on your knees. And of course, I'm too old now, man. I got to wear knee pads, dude. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to stuff like that, uh, I, I have to wear knee pads going up ladders. Oh yeah. <laughs> You never know. You never know when you're going to fall. You never know when you're going to fall. So let's let's talk about. Uh, oh, before we get into this, uh, we all here are with Alien Strand Disclosure Project. I want everybody to know that uh, we're all part of the of the family, and so we're going to be able to kind of take a look at a video uh, that came out uh, a couple of days ago, and I'm going to go ahead and share it right now. It's it's a UFO that uh, somebody caught with their digital camera. You can tell because of the zooming, the sound of it, and it looks like they're, it's trying to autofocus. So let's go ahead and check that out. Here we go. All right. So what we saw there is basically a craft that it's you can't pretty much see with, a, with your eye. He had to really zoom in on that uh, to actually, you know, get the uh the image so i actually that video it's not as uh when you watch the original it's not as clear so i enhanced it a little bit i clarified it a little bit uh what do you guys think about what you're seeing uh there on screen well uh, uh, what i what i gather on that is that they're they're using an autofocus on something like a canon or nikon when they're zooming in and Sometimes the camera will catch what's up there. Sometimes it will not. Uh, you notice how it disappeared uh, yeah. completely. Uh, yeah. That's that's when you're 100 percent out of focus. It came into focus, and then right at that point where it started to come into perfect focus, gone. It's uh, kind of a I, I would almost want to call it a defect in in our photography equipment. However. Um, if you start going into, uh, something that's got a really, really good processing unit for, for, uh, doing the picture and taking the photography. Now I'm, I, here I go. I am Nikon. Get everybody laughing for a second. Cause I say it every time. Damn right. All right. <laughs> now the, 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 the problem here is, is Sony has a better processor. Uh, Nikon can super zoom in. Uh, undoubtedly, Nikon is our number one super zoom camera. But you can get a Sony super zoom camera that goes up, to, I believe it's an 800 millimeter, and the the, the picture is spectacular right. compared to to uh, a 3,000 millimeter uh, Nikon super zoom. However you get a lot more with your Nikon. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, Nikon's your bigger bank for the buck. But uh, what's, what's I mean, happened I mean, there, that that looks like it was done with a cell phone. Okay? Somebody was trying to zoom in with a cell phone. You could tell that they did not have a tripod in that. But the things I did see in that picture 
was when they did have that one moment of clarity, I could see around that craft, you could actually see uh, uh, EMF field. You could tell that that, that was an anomaly in the sky, yep. and you could clearly tell it was not an airplane or a bird. So that right there, I would have to say that that right there was a good, as far as this ASDP ufologist is concerned, that's a craft. What do you think, David? I definitely agree on all accounts, from the Nikon to the UFO. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, did, uh, did, did, yeah. My phone acts like that, too, when I pick up things like that. And it just it does the autofocus, and sometimes it just can't la- latch onto it, especially if you can't see it with your eye. I can just imagine it having a hard time. So, yeah. You can uh, definitely see there's a field around that crack. Right. And right. It's, it's not hauling butt like a jet or, an, or a helicopter. You know, definitely something that we haven't seen. It's stationary and it's not moving. It's it's in that tilt and it's kind of yep. just staying there like that. I mean, yep. uh, and it's it's in a hover. It looked to me when you zoom in, it kind of looks like probably about as big as a car, a large car maybe, or a bus. That's Compared about where the house, that's, how the houses were, and then you right take that size and, and imagine the zoom going up. Right, I, that's what I said. I'm, I'm thinking it's a probably probably about that big. That was a great catch, by the way. You know, um, and whoever did it and whoever got it, hey, man, thank you. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. ooh, we lost Terry. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's coming back. He's popping back in. Um, so, you know, today we're we we're going to talk about the um, <laughs> the Nevada. Uh, we move the, spots. Yeah, you move spots. Uh, we're going to talk about the Nevada incident. So, um, that. What happened on the on recently here last week on uh, June seventh? Um, we got the, the 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 police cam right, and well, I guess he was talking to somebody or had somebody pulled over, and then his domestic uh, his, dispute. Yeah, his body cam ended up picking up this uh, craft going by or, or this blue streak uh, streaking by, uh, and some and you know what you're seeing there on the left side of the photo. And then on the right side, somebody actually stopped it and cleared it up a little bit. So, um, I mean, what do you guys take on this? Uh, when you, when he first saw this, you know, and then the re- then the reports started to come in uh, that somebody called in that something hit their backyard. You know, um, what do you guys? What, what what's your take on that? Would you, you like to take this not, first? It's not a, a meteorite. I mean, they go a little faster and they burn out right before they hit the ground normally. I mean, and this thing doesn't seem to be going that fast, and it makes noise. Right. You know, there's the other clip that I'm sure you have it, but it it makes a pretty good noise as it's coming down. Right. There's like a boom. Uh, you can hear it. With, I think it was the neighbor's ringer camera, right? That caught the doorbell. boom? Or? Yes. yes. That's what the doorbell? That. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Terry, what do you think about that? Uh uh, on top of the noise that he, you hear when it comes down, he's one of the things he's talking about is it's uh, almost like the D1 sharp noise I was talking about and my uh, D1 sharp hypothesis. Um, it, it was making a humming noise at, before it came down. You can hear that clearly in the video. And as it came down, then you heard the boom. And I believe that was the camera that was kind of focused across their backyard. They didn't. They didn't have it aimed at the location. Right. Uh, the other, the other one was uh, the family as they were coming around the back. They had opened up the gate, and you could you could vaguely see. I filtered a few things. I filtered quite a few things actually uh, from what I could grab from small bits of uh, video, and uh, as well as uh, satellite footage, looking in. But uh, so I, I, I you, you that, could you could you could actually kind of see the the eyes of one of the aliens as it was looking towards him. I think that this video, this um, the 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 police cam, what caught it about what about eleven fifty something like that, right? Uh, be, before the call came in, um, before this fam- the family here, the Gomez family, so they ended up right. calling calling it in. Uh, and uh, talk to dispatch. I think it was at twelve twenty nine. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll, we'll look back at that here in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, they ended up calling it in, and he's saying, "Hey, man, something hit the backyard." 
you know, we don't know exactly what it what it is, but we see two large aliens, you know, standing out there. Uh, and they're not human. He says they don't look human, right? Who says that? Right. You know, hey, you know I, I, I'd like to interrupt for just a second. Angel, Angel Gomez, I, I, I would I would really like for you to reach out to uh, um, our ufologist, uh, Donald Ledesma. He he uh, he's not going to make fun of you. He's going to make sure the story is told correctly. I understand that you've got many other offers for what what's happened here, but we're one hundred percent disclosure at ASDP, and I I believe that uh, that you can get your story told correctly. I know I got mine told correctly through Donald Ledesma, as well as many other ufologists. And people who are witnesses and abductees and people who have seen what you've seen. I also, just like you, I had eye to eye contact. Okay. Um, you're, you're going to start knowing things you didn't realize you were going to know. And now's the time to get a hold of somebody that, that can actually talk to you and understand what, what happened with you. I think I've seen things eye to eye. Uh, Mr. Donald Ledesma can interview you. 100 percent and give you exactly the type of respect that you need uh res- asdp is based on your story and respect that's how we are so don't don't think that we're going to shun your family you you need to come talk to us about this we're not the government and we're not cnn we're not any of that we are we're citizen ufologists what do you say donald Háblame, por favor. Give me a call, brother. Give me a call. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you. And, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about your story. And we'll bring it out. You know, we'll give the exact truth of what's happening. I know people are scared sometimes. And they just... Right now, he's got a lot of anxiety. That's, that's what he reported uh, uh, a couple, yesterday. Yeah, he's, he's being intimidated. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of anxiety. So it, it'd probably be best to wait just a little bit before you talk to him. Yeah. But, but when you're ready, you know, give us a call, Alien Strand Disclosure Project, or call me directly, man. And I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you. And we'll, we'll get your story out there a little bit better and, and, and in a safer manner, you know, to where you don't have to worry. Uh, that's what we're about. Uh, For disclosure. Exactly. So right here, we, we have the, 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 where the family starts talking to the police officer of what they witnessed. It already happened. So they're already talking to him, and and then a sec, another officer came in, came on uh, after this, and and talked to them as well. So uh, of course, the only reason the officer went over there is because he he saw it himself, right? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was yeah, he was curious. He was like, "What the hell?" You know. And then this call comes in. There's aliens in the backyard. He wanted to go see if you know what the hell's going on. You know? He couldn't and he, deny it. Yeah, and he even said, "If there's aliens in your backyard." Don't call me. I don't want to go back there. You know, it's, it, I know he was joking, but, you know, the sensitivity of it, you know, a lot of people will freak, man, if they saw something like that. I mean, look what this family's going through. You know, Angel, I mean? Angel, if the police won't call, call us, we'll come. Yeah, right. they, they don't believe we, you. We will be if there. They don't believe you at all. You come to somebody who will believe and won't judge you, won't put you down and be total, totally un- unbiased. We're exactly. here for you 100%. Uh, so this is the dispatch call from the LVMPD, um, you know, about what he saw, what time, everything, you know. And I believe it says uh, uh, 1229.22. That's what time the, the, the call came in. And they, the dispatcher started talking to, the, to uh, I believe, Angel. I think that's his name that uh, that was uh, telling the, the, the uh, dispatcher that, there's something in his backyard and it's about eight to 10 feet tall. I mean, how would you know if it was eight to 10 feet tall? Right. I mean, especially as a young, as a young man, right. He's probably about what, 17, 18, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he's 16. But, but, but he, but, but he works on, on forklifts and those uh, front end loaders. So he knows how tall those damn things are. Right. Yes. Uh, he's got the mast on the forklift and he's got the fence beside him. The big fence that they had along around the property, as well as, uh, the entire property is completely covered in gravel. There, I, I noticed that there's a, a bunch of stuff that's disinformation 
that's been going out on uh, Facebook as well as anywhere on the internet. Uh, there was one where they're showing something that's got kind of a long tail. Uh, there's other ones that are showing shorter creatures. But uh, the the biggest the biggest one is none of them, not one of them, it was actually you know certified by the family that said that they'd seen what they'd seen, and mm-hmm. until until you actually have the 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 information from the person, uh, don't don't count on what's out there. Um, uh, Donald had actually put out something the other day from another ufologist that stated that. When, whenever something like this takes place, immediately uh, there's government, there's all kinds of other people that throw out misinformation immediately to try and make it to where it looks like it's fictitious. Mm-hmm. So within what was it? Within an hour, there was there was all kinds of disinformation that had nothing to do with it that they were trying to tie with it. And it was trying to make these these people that had witnessed this look like they did not witness what they had seen. Even the cops we, that, that came out and said that it was unfounded. The police on side. See exactly, you exactly. Them, you know what I mean? By their upper upper command, right. they're not. They don't want this thing to get out. I mean, they're. I don't, no. I don't even know why because the government is leaking things, and then you get something like this that they just want to try to sweep under i don't understand there's too much information and too much credible evidence exactly uh i mean and and like i said they kind of joked about it at the beginning but they were pretty much serious on what they know that they saw something and and they for them to go over there and go to their house they had to go now they have to submit another report right because the first report the call the second report is when they got to actually talk to the the people there well, and two sergeants and they, yeah and they get and they get all the information now did they get all the information from everybody i don't know nobody knows that yet uh not until there's a police report out there that they talk to this person and that person that person but how can you make a report? Uh, I, like I said, I used to be a police officer back in 94 right? and 296. It was two years only. But when you do a report, I mean, how are you going to do a report like that about a UFO or about, a, a, you know, it's it's the stigma is still there. But how do you make the report like this family said they saw this eight to 10 foot being with big black eyes? And you're writing this in your report, right? You take that right. back. To, you take that back to to the, the office and submit that report. Your sergeant is going to look at you and you're going to say, dude, you actually did a report on this. You, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it, it kind of, it, it, the stigma, man, there's some people like that still today, still today. But I mean, I hope they did a report on it because that would be so awesome. I mean, I, so. I, th- I think so. That's, that's part of why I didn't do, that's why I didn't report what happened with me with uh, Ben police or the sheriff's department. Originally, I was scared. Okay, but by the way, Ben, police, Ben, sheriff's department. You guys want to report? Here I am. Yeah. Um, I we've made a documentary. We've made a movie. You can pretty much get all your answers from that. However, um, I continue to see things. I know how to see things because of what I experienced. And there's many more people around this location, but around the world, but in this location that they can see the same things that I'm seeing. I've got people that are showing me stuff right here in the area. I take my reports. I've, I've, I've interviewed people from all over the world that have seen the same thing that I've seen uh, and many other different things. Uh, we, we have a, uh, uh, situation here where we're getting ready to meet i believe we're getting ready to start to meet these things uh it doesn't matter if they're the ones from here the ones that live within the earth but they it could be it could be something from somewhere else okay however we got to get ourselves prepared because they're starting to show themselves on a regular basis and this gentleman this gentleman over here (laughs) thank you (laughs) that way (laughs) i gotcha (laughs) he he's the guy that takes our reports for asdp and donald ledesma he's he's our our founding member of alien strand 
this guy's the he's let's just call him the godfather <laughs> anyway <laughs> and then i'm i'm one of those big muscle bastards that'll smack you across the mouth if your research ain't right that's right <laughs> so you better get your research right before you run it past me and i'm looking for people all around the world that that do this um now we have we have a big list of people up for our website but there's a lot more people involved. We have people in India. We have people in Iran. We have people in Taiwan, the Philippines, China, Japan. We have every country listed that we have ufologists in. At some point, some of these people will be put up on there. Uh, we're, what we're doing is we're going through different ufology groups. The different ufology groups are very happy to see us. And what we're doing is we're looking for the cream of their crop. We want people that know their business, but we don't want egos. If you've got an ego walking into this, you're not going to be part of this. Yeah, we don't care for that. your ego. So we got we got to we 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 got a uh, somebody's talking right here. His name's Mark Starkin. Okay. Uh, he's on my Facebook page as as a matter of fact. Uh, he says he says my body cam, if any, can be requested by public request. So um, you can get that information. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Uh, that that helps I appreciate that too. Yeah, for 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 that. Uh, yeah, the there's a lot of good police officers in the world, by the way. Yes, there is. I've got the numbers to the body cam footage, so we can request it anytime we want. Nice rock and roll, man. David's on the ball, man. You're gonna get yeah. raised, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, let's let's talk about uh, about the um, okay. So we 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 already talked about what happened when it was reported. Uh, the the nine one one dispatch call, uh, the interaction with the police and the, the Gomez family. Let's talk about the sonic boom that that was heard on uh, the neighbor's ring ringer cam. I believe I don't have the the video of it, but uh, it's it's out there already, man. All over. You I, I've got it out on ASTP uh, yeah. group out on you. Uh, so, David, what what is your uh, what is your take on on that part of it? Well, you can definitely hear it coming down. It's loud. Um, those ring camera cameras are really good for picking up pretty much anything in your neighborhood. And you can hear it coming down. You can hear it slam into the ground. It didn't hit a tree. Yeah, that's a solid hit. Very solid. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I heard it. I mean, uh, it's just, you, you can hear it when it's just coming in and then boom, it just, it lands, right? Uh, what, what are your thoughts of that, uh, Terry? Well, uh, from, from what I've seen of the, the different uh, satellite footage going into the location, I can see a ring where there's kind of waves moving in. Um, this, I, I did a, a gamma filtration on it. Uh, you can see it right there, uh, both in that picture, but I, you can see a gamma filtration on it. And it, it sounded to me like this location may already may have had this indentation. Um, so without without knowing much more about what's going on. Um, I, from what I see, it looks like something hit that location. It came in, it stopped. Uh, they had about 10 minutes to get their, their whatever back together, get back in the craft and get out. Uh, however, it's the entire inside of that yard is a gravel pit as well as the, uh, it's, it's got look look like uh, about eight foot uh, cinder block walls around it. Um, the the w w what I'm looking at could possibly also be where equipment might have turned uh, inside the yard. I don't want to I don't want to sound like we're we know everything. Right. So what I'm what I'm seeing here could could be the radius of a turn on a forklift or it could be where something a radius of the side of a craft that sat down now if you look at that that radius is roughly about 15 i would say 15 to 16 foot if you were to do the complete analyzation of it i'm, I'm taking a shot here i'm not uh, this is without any measurements 
I'm looking at that as 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 the size of that radius. Um, you don't really see any equipment that's going into that that direction. Where it, it, it's a, almost a perfect circle, so it looks like something came in and it landed into that location. You see a wave underneath that that. And I don't know if you have. Uh, I sent a uh, a picture with gamma. I yeah. did a gamma filter. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can also see the filter with with that line. There it is. Um, this is my ASDP result. You can see the the wave line. Now that type of wave line is uh, in the <laughs> skyline would be considered what's called a uh, scalar wave up in the sky. Whenever there's like a large uh, uh, explosion off in the distance, like say uh, the volcano, the giant volcano that just went off, um, what do they call that? Tango, Tonga, Tonga. Uh, there was a volcano out in the middle of the ocean that went off. It sent scalar waves out around the world uh, four times. That that uh, that little bit that you see right there, the ripples. Uh, yeah. That's what a scalar wave would look like, and and when you have an impact go into the Earth, you end up with what would be a scalar wave, not only on the land, but you'd have a scalar wave in the sky, especially if you heard a large, almost like a sonic boom or a boom. Well, so yeah, it's like it's like that a, looks like an actual impact to me. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's clarify this just a little bit before we go a little deeper into this. So, uh, okay. David, what did you find uh, on this uh, actual impact? I'm going to go back one picture, then we'll go back forward. Hold on. Okay. Okay, There's so a couple, David- of, couple of things about this that came up for me. Um, one on the size, the if you see or look over to the left of the circle, there's a container, shipping container. Those come right. in 20 foot by... Um, eight foot wide, right? Thirty foot long or forty foot long. That one looks like a twenty foot long one. If you right. slide that over to that circle, it looks about the same lengthwise, maybe a little bit more. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. size comparison. Um, this circle came up on Google Maps back in April eighteenth, uh, two thousand twenty-two. Um, in May 31st of 2022 and then June 14th of 2022 as being right in that same spot but that doesn't mean that the craft wasn't there that's where they saw it so I'm going by what he said Angel Gomez right. Uh, right. then right. the picture on the right showing the gamma shot you know it looks to me like it's off just a little bit it's it's in the circle but I mean right. it's just off to the side uh, you know you know what I'm saying so yeah. it probably landed right in that area. Right. I mean, who um, way to say, Angel, you're wrong. You know, he saw it. <laughs> that's true. There he was. I, I, David Nash says, uh, he says, I'd say it was about 50 foot in diameter, I guess. He's guessing. So um, that's that's pretty much it. And he says he's seen a lot of videos already in, uh, in Las Vegas uh, since the day of that crash. Uh, not crash, uh, the landing. We're going to call it a landing. It's not a crash because there was no recovery uh, of that, of that, uh, whatever happened. Uh, we still don't know. See, and, and this is what I'm trying to, to establish on the landing, right? When it landed in their, in their backyard and there, when they opened the fence, you could see them kind of go in the fence and then they, they get spooked and they jump back, right? In the video. You can see it. Yeah. yeah but, but I cannot see the craft. You know what I mean? As so, in other words, if the, the big forklifts in the way, that thing's about what? Uh, how tall do you think that is, David? Maybe or, or yeah, it probably is, about it's over ten feet. They're, over they're 10, 12 tall. feet. Yeah. And then when, when you see the, the when you see the the, the being the, the extraterrestrial, it's standing like literally at the window. Yep. So we know that that thing is more than eight feet. It's about ten feet because I used to I used to drive those uh, forklifts like that. They're huge. Um, yeah. But the thing is. If there was an impact or there was a a UFO, let's just say, uh, that landed back there, it was not glowing. There was no lights. There was nothing. So do you think that maybe when it landed, uh, 
it kind of like went dark, maybe like you know what I mean, or maybe oh. invisible. Uh, because when it comes in in the atmosphere going across the sky, it's that blue color, yep. and we fi- we figured it'd be glowing somewhat, right? That that's the exact color I had coming out of that uh, off the Wendigo. Uh, remember when we did the interview at Black Black uh, Crater? Yeah, Black that Black. was the that was the exact. That was the exact color of the the uh, craft that were coming out of the side of the mountain for me uh, mm-hmm. when I had uh, uh, Chris Hamill uh, filtrate it. Now, th- what I'm seeing here is that we need to get a better response time with law enforcement. I'm not I'm not saying law enforcement slow. These these guys have got a lot of things on their mind. They got a lot of things going on. Um, they're they're in the middle of saving somebody from some somebody else that's doing something wrong. Right. Okay, I understand that. But whenever we've got something like this, throw that damn bastard in the back of your car and let's go. Let's go see what's on the other side. That guy can be a witness too, the one you just handcuffed. But go to the spot. Don't make an hour out of it, dude. This is really important to us, everyone, including you. Um. We, we, we need to make it a precedence until we actually have the answer because everybody is looking for this answer. So if we can, if we can now, mind you, I understand if, if somebody's trying to stab somebody or whatever the hell else it is the cop is doing that day, I understand. It takes precedence over this. Right. I don't want you to risk your life for this, but if you can, if you can find a way, to go to this response in a matter of minutes versus an hour. Lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you 24 7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, They can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. Okay, um, I think I think that I think that the the police department will get an answer. I think the world will get an answer, and whoever that police officer is, and I'm telling you right now, whoever that cop is, he's going to be a rock star in the world. That guy <laughs> oh, yeah. will be in every movie, everything. Yeah, There's a thing that guy can't get. They'll be so think about that. <laughs> yeah, so they'll what, they'll want to talk to you, dude. What, what we're <laughs> looking get at there. here. What we're, be what we're, be that super cop. What we're looking at here is the, the a drone footage on the next day uh, of somebody I guess took it uh, maybe from the news or whatever. Uh, but this is the actual backyard uh, from the yeah, guess, it's all gravel from, from, the, from the air. It's all gravel, so you can see to the left there's a swimming pool, and then straight in the backyard it's just straight up gravel. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, okay. Just kind of think about this in a logical sense, just for a minute, okay? I'm not saying I'm an alien, or I'm not saying. Let's just say as a pilot, okay? <laughs> so if you're co- if you're coming in, right, and something's wrong with your craft, or something's wrong with your airplane, and this is probably what happened, man. So I think this is probably what happened. Something went wrong, and they came down. So where where to be a great spot for you to come down? Now, would you come down on top of the house? Matt. 
That's the best you, spot. Or, or would you come down on, on that open area right there? Right? That, that open there's area. No, there's no right? way. I mean, I saw the more where it was more pulled out from this. And it's just right. like the house. And you've got this one open space. You're, you're true. And it's, it's true. I mean, you're right. Yeah, yeah, and the, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't park my helicopter anywhere else. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and, and you know, and, and I, let, let's let's just say it was it was fifty times bigger than this. You think it would have landed right there and smashed all those houses to hell? I don't think so. Uh, you know, they would have probably figured out a different place to land it. Uh, but I mean, that's just the point of view that I'm looking at it uh, at that point. Um, now, let's talk about the extraterrestrials that was actually seen. Well, can I bring uh, up one thing. Go ahead. That gravel area. It, when you put gravel down like that, you don't just do it an inch or two thick. You do yeah. it like four, six inches. Sometimes we, I've even had it had it as deep as a foot because right. you want it to, to last forever. You're going to run front end loaders in there. Right. There are other places that were saying uh, that there'd be a big in, in, indention. Not necessarily with gravel. Gravel's totally different than sand or dirt. Right. You know it makes an impression like this when you uh, we've dropped big containers on the ground and this is pretty much what they do on gravel you know uh, yeah. there's other naysayers out there that i just wanted to clip that in the butt a little bit and say you know it's not it doesn't react like soil does no it does not that's true that is exactly <laughs> right that's exactly I, right. I was right a friend of mine cv 750 um motorcycle one day and I got kind of ahead of him a long way. I thought I better pull over so I pulled off the side of the road and guess what I found? About eight inches deep gravel. Yeah. The problem was it was his motorcycle. So when I buried Ouch. the front end of that, I went flying over the front end of that bike. Ouch. I got back onto the bike as fast as I could and pulled it back out and met him on the side of the road. Is that what is that is that is that when you fall and you hope nobody saw you fall kind of thing? Okay, so there was somebody that saw me and I started yelling at them and they got out of there. Oh. But uh they saw they actually saw me go in the air over the handlebars. Ah, uh, okay. That was the day I became a member of the over the handlebars club. <laughs> <laughs> you too, yeah, I get that. That's it's you can't get past it. Yeah. I don't ride I I haven't rode a motorcycle really in a while. <laughs> Let's let's talk about the extraterrestrials. Uh, that was a good that was a good thing. Uh, so, what we're looking at is uh, the left was the actual footage from the video. Took stills from it uh, because it was so shaky. It was kind of hard to see. You know what was going on. People were trying to make out exactly what they were seeing. Uh, so actually the one on the left and the one on the right, somebody cleared it up a little bit. It's basically the same photo, but it's moved over a little bit in a different angle. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. it was two, there was two cameras filming, maybe three, but, uh, this is what's been out there so far. Cause not everybody has TikTok, not everybody has Facebook, you know, imagine the ones in the family that didn't have these, uh, apps, social, social media apps that what footage they have on their, on their actual cameras or phones. So. So these are the ones hey, we're Donald, looking at, right? Yeah. Are you are you able to bring that center one up to the middle? Uh, no, I can't zoom it in. It won't let me zoom in. But uh, it's the the center one. What we're looking at. So what I did was I did some digging uh, the next couple of days later, uh, and I started going through videos and people were talking about it. And so the one in the center, what you're looking at, there was a gentleman that lived a couple of doors away. He wanted to remain anonymous. Okay. So he says he went, when he heard the boom, he went to his backyard because that's where it happened. Uh, he, he heard it. So uh, he said he had those, uh, those um, uh, monitor lights, you know, those uh, motion, motion sensor lights. Uh, so it was, it was pitch dark. It was pitch dark in the backyard. He could see something moving around, but he couldn't tell until it came closer. Once it came closer, the motion, the motion light, turned on luckily he had his phone in his hand and he shot five photos of this this thing right when he shot the five photos uh he said only one came out right we always had the blurry photos the bigfoot photos uh the, you know we come we'll never get one that's real clear this one actually came out pretty darn good for being outside now to me it does kind of look like the the alien on the right uh it does. It kind of does look like it. The other one on the right looks a little bit more bug-eyed in a sense, where the, the the eyes are more 
they're they're, they're coming out a little bit more. Well, he, he could just be looking towards the camera and his face up a little bit, which would make the eyes look bigger. Exactly, right. and then that, that's that's true too. So he he got a he says this thing looked at me, and when he shot the pictures, uh, he said it came out dark, so he had to to intensify and brighten them up, you know, clarify them a little bit, and that was the best one he got out of all of them. Now is this seeing that eight or nine feet tall, ten feet tall? Oh, he, he had Down. taking those pictures. Down. Just stand there. Yeah. What's up, Kerry? This is this is what I saw. Is that the one? That's who I saw. Well, then that's the one there. Uh, that's him. The, he, the one in the middle, one hundred percent for sure. He said it was it was kind of grayish, green looking. It, it, I mean, not green, but it, it had a it makes, real yeah. pale. It was a pale gray, you know, in between gray and green in a sense. That's uh, what uh, that like. Yeah, yeah, the one that just. I mean, before we had that. First meeting with ASDP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I I couldn't move, so I was looking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I was sleep paralysis, I guess uh, is what they call it. But I mean, right. you're wide awake, and this is exactly the same color of skin. The face that is you a little bit different, but yeah. It's, this is what you saw too. It is. It's. Scary to sit in there. Looking. Well, if, whoever, if y'all don't know, uh, David is an actual. Uh, he's he's been in, in the presence of of an extra extraterrestrial as a child and as a young adult, as adult as well. So he's been uh, kind of going through this for a long time. Uh, so he knows what these things look like as well, just as like Terry does. So I'm glad you guys are so to tell folks that you know this is what you saw, you guys saw as well. So in other That's words, if if this is what you guys saw, then. Pretty much, this is the, the dead ringer, right? This is the nail in the coffin. That's just that's, that's it. Just, hey. I think we got disclosure. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Uh, so uh, Mark Stockton says wasn't one of the guys at the gate armed. Um, I did see that. I saw the. I think it was the uncle, or whatever. He had a side. He had a side arm. Yeah, he had a side without a gun. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I show but, up every time with one. <laughs> but when when they were walking out, he was armed. He never had his his hand on the on the on the pistol. I saw right. that. And then when they all and he even jumped back too, and he's armed, man. But he didn't have the pistol out or in his hand or anything, so he didn't even have a chance to to get it out. Uh, I, so I guess he was freaked out just as bad about it. I got something to say about uh, what happens here. <clears throat> when you look these things eye to eye, I, I don't. I, I'm not exactly sure what everybody else is. But when I saw what I saw and we looked eye to eye, we were locked. I couldn't I couldn't break my look. Um, it stopped me. It stopped everything I was doing. Uh, before we actually made eye to eye contact, I had already felt a calm come over me. Uh, something that that uh, made me feel like everything was okay before before. I saw what I was going to see. Right. Um, I had a I had a complete calming come over me. My stepson, who was sitting beside me in the car, he had the same thing. He said he felt a complete calm come over him. Um, and then we saw what we saw. Right. Yeah, we saw the craft. We saw I saw the eye to eye. He was more looking at the craft itself. Um, but what, uh, it, it, it stunned me. It was like a, all of a sudden I couldn't, I couldn't pop my clutch on the car. I couldn't hit the brake. I, I, there was a lot of, I, I was already, I came to a stop. Thank God I came to a stop first. We came to a stop and then I looked at this thing and then you know, it, it, we we didn't move. It it was like we were kind of stuck. Right. You know, we well, didn't we didn't we didn't want to turn. We didn't want to drive. We didn't know what else to do. We we're looking at this, and our mind just like froze the hell up. Uh, you don't you don't know what's next here. You're looking me, at something that's like almost like a bear attack without the trauma. You know. Ask- let me ask you guys a question since both of you guys have seen this, uh, David and yourself. Um, 
when you're looking at that picture in the middle, which pretty much is a dead ringer for both of you guys, when when you're seeing that photo, does it is it uh, kind of traumatizing for you in a sense to see it, or does yeah. it kind of does it freak you? In other words, what I'm trying to say, does it kind of freak you out a little bit by seeing the picture that's kind of close to it? Because I know it probably won't be exactly what you saw, but it'd be close to it. I, um, I mean, I want to have a conversation with it. What are your thoughts, David? I am a little triggered. Yeah, o- only because of what happened to me in, when I was young. Right. Uh, and but lately, I mean, I haven't told you guys about this, but. Uh, night, um, night before last night, we had an incident here at the house, and it didn't just involve myself; it involved the whole family. My wow. wife, my children, they all heard this. There was knocking outside on our window when we were up in the master. The kids heard it downstairs. I come come downstairs, and I'm. I thought it. I thought somebody was just had some pop. You know, popping off some fireworks. Right. And went outside, everything's dead quiet. Nobody talking at all. You know, if somebody's out there doing fire, fireworks, then they're talking and having a good time. There was nothing, dead silence. That night I had a my most recent encounter. And uh, I was not sleeping this time. Wide awake. Oh. Um, and it's just like he said, just like Terry says, uh, your mind sort of goes blank. I think that's by design. I think they do that, you know, because they want to talk to you. They don't right. speak to you with your through your ears. You hear it in your mind. It's the weirdest yeah. thing. It's, it's, it's almost it's like ha- having headphones inside your brain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like a lot of people com- complain when well, I complain, but they say there's the ringing in the ears. I get that all the yeah. time, you know, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and, and, and that nice stop. yeah, and it's nonstop and he could drive you nuts. Um, I think William Shatner, believe it or not, he had that and he, it almost drove him crazy. Uh, I don't know how he got, was able to get rid of it, but I know there's a story of him saying that he had that ringing in his ear and it got him so sick. It was getting him sick that he couldn't figure it out, uh, why their ears couldn't stop ringing. Um, but of of course, of course, us as ufologists, we're kind of putting things together. And hey, who's to, who's not to say that he was probably you know approached by something that he just probably not talking about, maybe, or 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 not conscious enough to know that something happened to him. Uh, and, and you know, when I go in a cave, it goes away. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. That's weird. Every, there's a lot of caves where I live, so every single time I go into a cave, it completely goes away. Wow. Well, that's a new one. I've never heard of that one. It's strange, but every single time. Well, I wish we had caves over here in South Texas, but unfortunately, we're full of water, man. Oh, <laughs> that's all we have over here. They, they uh, are. <laughs> and heat. Um, so, I mean, now that we got uh, some logistics of here of, of what happened, um, the extraterrestrial and uh you know the thing that everybody saw uh you know the the trauma that that he's having you know that you know, young kid angel i guess that's his name uh, you know we we pretty much put it all together for folks to kind of figure it out for themselves you know what what they think they possibly saw you know and um or not what they think what they saw but we know what they saw it's just getting the correct story out there. They're already talking about that these people went dark, and they disappeared, the government picked them up. Uh, I think David just sent me an article this morning or today about they set up cameras behind their houses already. Yep. Uh, there's yep. actually yeah. a camera system. It's probably but, for their safety. Yeah, for their safety. You, what? You're, you're going to stop them with a camera? No, come on. Yeah. They, they, they <laughs> the, the incident's over, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're coming back. I think they just. Yeah, it's probably yeah. not going. Lightning's not going to strike twice. Uh, and if it does, well, then they they forgot something. They left something behind. You know what they, I mean? Part of their craft. Yeah, <laughs> or or they dropped something. You know, I, I'm not going to say out of their pocket because I don't know if they were wearing clothes. Well, but you know, uh, we've seen we've seen these crafts. So you're looking at them, and all of a sudden they disappear, and then they're ba- back again. So they're yeah. right. a smoking device. You know, exactly. That right. could have been there while they were walking around. They could might have walked through it. You know, you know, who knows what, how far that cloaking goes. You know what I mean? Do you well, if, something that's not there, or do you? Does it allow you to walk through it, pass through it, and just like feel the, the hairs go up on your skin? You know. 
My question is, how come, how come the sheriff's department doesn't have rag counters? It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. I don't know. I don't you know, know that, would, that would make sense if they're going to investigate that specific thing, you'd think they'd have a, a uh, uh, something that could read the magnetic fields, rag counters, or maybe, I'm just going to throw this out there, maybe they could hire ASDP ufologists with all that equipment to come out and check it. That's right. All mm-hmm. they got to do is realize that we have people in every part of the world. That's right. And... We have people that take care of stuff like this in every region. And at some point, every one of us that are in charge in those regions are going to have that type of equipment. So when the police have something like this take place, we can come out and we can take care of this part of the investigation with the enforcement that's in, in place. Now, I want to make I want I want to make sure that everybody knows we don't AFDP. We don't require any government not whatsoever, anywhere in the world for disclosure. What we do have is we have the ability to help you investigate whatever's going on that you can't explain, okay? We have the equipment, we have the cameras, we have night vision, we have rag counters, we have uh, magnetic field counters, we have things like that. And at some point, we're going to make sure all of our investigators have the exact equipment that's required. To, to you know, take care of the things that you don't have, because you're not going to carry that in your car. You you need things like bulletproof vests and machine guns and shotguns and things. But we're not going to we're not going to say that that a regular police officer or even a detective should have this stuff. They've got their own things going on. Right. Well, I mean, okay. what, what what say you, David? I mean, uh, you know, uh, you are you have. We just don't don't know, just doesn't do uh, uh, aliens. We actually do supernatural as well. Uh, Absolutely. So, I mean, what's your say on that, David? I'm ready to go anytime. We can we can find out if it's paranormal. We can find it all the way to ufology. So, anytime anybody needs any help, they all they got to do is reach out. We just need to get on their radar as far as the uh, law enforcement. Once we're on their radar, they'll know who to call. Right on. Well, I mean, David's part of our uh, paranormal team as far as a ufologist as well. Uh, but there's a few of us that actually do both. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, we specialize in ufology, but we do paranormal because we know they're connected. Uh, you know, and that's what what we do here at Alien Strand Disclosure Project. And I'm glad that David's a part of it. I'm glad that Terry Lynch and I are, are part of it and we put it together. Now, uh, Terry, you have something to say about uh, what do we got for Alien Strand Disclosure Project about uh, maybe getting some folks uh, involved in uh in right okay so I, I i'd like to put an invitation out to people in different locations around the regions around the world uh not just in the united states i want people from brazil chile i want people from iran iraq i want people from taiwan i want as many people that that think that they can 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 film what we're looking at. Um, I want you guys to get your cameras up, point towards the sky. I want people to become members of ASDP. Uh, we want we want world collusion uh, and ufology. And at this point, when we 
we do this, what it does is it removes the government from this. We don't require the government for disclosure. We are disclosure ASDP. And I have one other, one more thing that I want to state before I get out of here. I got kind of a weight issue, and I'd like to, I'd like to find out what, what uh, one of our gentlemen here has to say about weight issues. Well, um, I am a health coach. My wife is a health coach with me. Um, we together have lost 140, 145 pounds. It keeps going. So, awesome. um, over this past year alone, um, we work with a really great company. It's so easy. I mean, I've never been able to do any, any, any kind of weight loss without yo-yo dieting. I mean, you know, it always comes back, but with this, it's totally different. It changes your mindset, changes your life, changes what you want to put into your body for fuel. You know, um, anybody who needs help, let me know. I'd love to be able to share it with you. What's it called? It's Optavia. Optavia. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, oops, shoot. I'm sorry. Uh, just for a minute. Um, so if anybody wants the, uh, you know, that's get some health care or, you know, wants to lose some weight, call Mr. David and he'll help you out in that and that. Now, if you want him, if you have a, uh, if you think you've been abducted or you've had, you're having trauma, you're having all, all, any kind of issues like that, talk to David. David's in charge of that as well. You can go to our website, ASTP hyphen at UFO dot uh, com. Go over there and his phone number's in there, his email, all our emails are there. So if you want to email us, any of us, you can email us there uh, and talk to us as well. Now, uh, we are we are looking for uh, donations and contributors as well. So uh, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna put it up on our main page so that way if anybody wants to be uh, help donate with the with our organization and get it going, uh, this this helps pay the website. It doesn't pay any of us, but just kind of helps keep it going and, and just it, it keeps everything going um, because a lot of the stuff does get expensive. Uh, you know, a dollar, five bucks, ten bucks, you know, a thousand dollars, whatever you want to you know donate would be excellent. Uh, that way we can get more disclosure, we can get more equipment for our ufologists. So we can have, uh, you know, more things to to go investigate, right? That's what it's about, uh, disclosure. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to to make your life easier uh, with David and, and Mr. Terry Lynch and, you know, up there in Oregon. And, you know, he, David's in South Carolina. You know, it's it's just one of those things, you know, we're, we're here to help you guys. Um, and I'm glad you guys are here to to watch our show today. And as we talked about, you know, this, uh, this Nevada uh, landing, not a crash landing so that's what we got so far uh hopefully we'll get some more information out of it and uh, i just want to thank you guys for being on the show today thank you david thank you uh mr terry lynch for being on the show thanks for having me thank you got it oregon ufology Right on. Uh, so, anyways, there we will uh, we'll have links to everything uh, after this podcast. We'll be on YouTube, it'll be on Twitter, and it'll be on uh, Facebook. So, uh, all the links will be there to this podcast today. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the content. Uh, you know, give us a shout out. Talk to any of these guys if you need any help. We'll be glad to help you. Thank you, Mark Stockton, and thank you, David Nash, and thank you uh, for for being here. To, and Cindy, thank you for for your comments. You know, every anytime we're on, we're we're here to answer and help you guys as well. All right, guys. Well, we'll talk to you guys later, and then I'll I'll close out the show. All right, brother. Take care. All right, guys. I hope you everybody enjoyed today's show. Um, you know, we, 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 we talked a, a lot of points and, uh, we did a lot of investigating on what happened in Nevada, uh, through ASDP and, uh, David did a really good job on, on getting everything out there for, for us and, uh, Terry and a lot of our other investigators, they were all on board. So we, we have a special, uh, group where we, we talk about everything that we do and, uh, you know, we, we put it out there as soon as possible. So, uh, if you guys can, like I said, there's a lot of disclosure there on our website, go check it out, man. Don't, don't be afraid to jump on there and it's free everything on there is free so you can go uh to any strange closure project you know and you can see everything that's happening there you know uh on our page you know uh there it is right there at the bottom with the ticker so go check that out visit our page give us a shout out go watch the middle please go watch the middle it's free on tubi tv you can't beat that with a stick man free game on man or that's with commercials if you if you don't like commercials 2.99 on on uh, amazon prime video so go check it out there no commercials you can get shoot right through it it's a great film with mr chair lynch i hope you guys enjoyed today's show and uh we'll see you on the next one all right until then you guys have yourselves a good day
Have yourselves a good evening. Have yourselves a good night. Executives, Coastal Bend, and Corpus Christi, Texas. And you're listening to the Alien Strand podcast with Donald Ledesma. Buying or selling, visit me at kellygreenrealtor.com or visit me on my Facebook page, Kelly Green Realtor. See you there. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.